Sticking with the banks, we'll get to our ETF spotlight today. Wilfred Frost has some of the highlights from the big bank conference calls. Wilfred, good morning. Good morning, Sarah. So uh, let's kick off again with those estimates we're getting out of the banks uh, for potential bad loans. Uh, it's really been the key focus uh, for the quarter. Uh, there, there they are for you, both in uh, dollar terms and percentages of total uh, loans outstanding. Now, yesterday, despite getting uh, those quite uh, impressively uh, scary numbers, JP Morgan and Wells Fargo were up uh, before their analyst calls. There's the JP Morgan intraday chart for the last two days. You can see it sold off significantly uh, during the course of yesterday when the analyst calls started. And that happened because we heard from the CFO of JP Morgan, quote, that the build for those bad loans could be meaningfully higher in aggregate over the next several quarters relative to what we booked in Q1. I, it could get worse from there. But here is the CFO of Bank of America being a bit more optimistic on his call today. In terms of the, your question about, hey, what's the likely reserve build in the future? If we, if we thought we were going to have to add more reserve build in the future, we would have put it into this quarter. Now, when we get to the end of the second quarter, the, we may have a different view of the future. And so we may release reserves or we may increase reserves. The quality of our loan book won't change that much because that doesn't change that much in a quarter. We've been very focused on prime and super prime customer borrowers for many years now, so the impacts to us of all those inputs is going to be different. Um, and, um, you know, um, I, guess that's the, I guess that's what all the information I would want to give you about, like, one input or another. Well, that hasn't uh, helped the share price today. Bank of America, the worst performer of the banks that have reported today, it's currently down 6.6%. Goldman Sachs, relative outperformer of the uh, earnings releases day, 1.7%. We've got the XLF uh, for you uh, in terms of the broad banks index today, down uh, significantly 4, 4.5% uh, for the week as a whole. We're looking at down 10% now for the banking index, Sarah. Yeah, and I think that's sort of where, Wilfred, some of the bullish arguments on the overall market start to fall apart. We've seen this tremendous bounce, and people are looking toward, you know, the opening day for the economy and the flattening of the curve on the virus and the Fed swooping in with trillions and trillions. And yet the banks are still, you know, pretty deep in this bear market. So what does that tell us about whether we can actually recover here? Absolutely. I think the tone uh, from all of the CEOs is that uh, if and when we do reopen the economy, perhaps a month or two later than the market's expected, and it will be uh, piecemeal at best. And that is why they're having to increase provisions for potential bad loans, because they think some people won't be able to meet those gains. And uh, I would point again, two or three of the banks year to date down over 45 percent, approaching that 50 percent decline, which kind of paints its own picture about what investors at least uh, feel is the outlet for these banks.